A new week begins right here, right now, on the morning after on Sports Grid and around the association. The stretch run of the NBA season is now firmly on as well, following the All Star break. And a team in the Eastern Conference, not far away from us, that plays their home basketball at the Mecca inside Madison Square Garden, the New York Knicks, trying to position themselves not in the Eastern Conference play in tournament but just in the Eastern Conference postseason. Welcome back to the morning after, live right here on this Monday. As to have some Knicks talk right now, CP, the franchise, joins us live right here on the morning after. The creator of Knicks Fan TV, also covering the NBA at Sirius XM, Channel 86, NBA radio here on Sirius XM. We are going to go around the association with CP in a focus on a huge game tonight inside MSG as well for the Knicks. CP, thank you so much time. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us live right here on this Monday. Ben, good morning. Absolutely a pleasure to be on with you, man. Anytime. A five-game win streak, CP, for the New York Knicks, including their first two following the All-Star break. And because of that, New York eight games above 500, 35 in 27. CP, as you look back at this season overall, now here on the other side of the All-Star break, how would you describe how 2022-23 has gone for the Knicks? It's been an incredible run so far, especially when you look at how this team started. It was a little bit rough out of the gates. They had some embarrassing losses, some at home to the to the OKC Thunder. You had the meltdown in Dallas with Luka Doncic's brilliance in it within nine seconds, and, and the Knicks blew that game. So there are a couple of tough losses in that schedule. But th- over the course of the season, they've managed to rip off an eight-game winning streak. They're now on their second five-game winning streak. You look at the play of Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle playing like all-stars. Jalen Brunson absolutely should have made it to Utah, especially when you know guys like Giannis are, are on load management and things of that nature. But nevertheless, Jalen Brunson's been brilliant. The Josh Hart acquisition has been a major lift to the Knicks bench. Uh, he and Emmanuel quickly in that in that backcourt are going to be a ferocious tandem to deal with in the playoffs. So that Nick bench has been elevated. And, you know, despite not being a, a efficient shooting team, this Knicks offense is ranked sixth in, in the NBA. NBA, seventh in overall net rating over this five game winning streak they're averaging 123 points per game so they've been red hot they've just gotten Mitchell Robinson back to, to fortify their defense and so they're clicking at the right time with the final 20 games left to go big week this week as you said CP at least from the odds perspective the Knicks are overperforming on preseason expectation a win total for New York before the year at 38 and a half right now the Knicks already have 35 games again eight games above 500 at 35 in 27. So CP, have you been surprised at all by the success New York has seen this season? I wouldn't necessarily say surprise. My expectation, my prediction rather, was at 41 games. They won 37 last year. I thought the Brunson acquisition would give them about four or five extra wins in the column. But, you know, the, the biggest surprise to me was with the Nets trading Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, that fifth spot or even four to catch Cleveland. That That's yeah. wide open right now because I did expect the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat to take a step back. I wasn't that, that big of a fan of what the Atlanta Hawks were doing. So I put the Knicks within that six, seven slot in the East. But as I said, with, with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving gone, the Knicks are now tied with the Nets right now in the fifth spot. I think the Nets will continue to slide back. They play their final game of the regular season uh, matchup this week as well. So fifth is right there for the Knicks and even fourth with Cleveland. And and that's going to be uh, pretty good. If the, if the Knicks can slide into that four or five slot for the playoffs, that'd be ideal. Yeah. Only three games back of the Cavs. And again, that four spot in the Eastern Conference would be monumental because they would host a postseason series once again at the world's most famous arena in Madison Square Garden. You mentioned Jalen Brunson and CP. Let me say I stand with you. Jalen Brunson absolutely should have been an NBA All-Star this year. And when you see the numbers, certainly here as of late for Jalen Brunson, it's very clear why. One of the biggest offseason acquisitions for the Knicks CP maybe wasn't one that all the Knicks fans were targeting entering the summer, but it has already paid dividends. How would you describe the significance that Jalen Brunson now has on his role for this New York Knicks team? Worth every penny, Ben. You know, we haven't had a point guard in New York for over 10 years, and he's come on since day one and and been an absolute blockbuster for this team. His scoring ability has been unmatched. I look at him as an elite shot creator in this league at all three levels, whether it's at the three-point line. His mid-range has been prolific. 
finishing at the basket. I mean, he's so crafty. You look at the footwork that that he displays out there. He has unlimited number of options when he's looking to score, whether it's on a, a smaller opponent or even a taller big, which a lot of teams are trying to throw at him. So he's given Julius Randle a dependable guy that you can rely on uh, both early in games and late. Jalen Brunson second in the league behind the Aaron Fox in clutch points. Whenever the game gets tight with five minutes to go within five points, it's when he plays at his best. So they're giving, he's given this team a, a closing option, a, a stabilizing force at the point guard position, and it's going to be a pleasure to watch these two operate in the playoffs. And Jalen Brunson, prior to the All-Star break and the NBA trade deadline, was thrilled with the acquisition of his former Villanova teammate. That would be Josh Hart. And Josh Hart, CP, has been a member of the New York Knicks for all five of these consecutive wins what has Josh Hart added to New York just in his small time with the team the best rebounding guard in the NBA has provided uh rebounding defensive tenacity as I said with he, he and Emmanuel quickly back there in that back court they are going to be a problem defensively they are switchable they get after it they can play make as well Josh Hart since coming to the Knicks over these last five games is shooting 62 percent from downtown on three attempts. And so he's just going to do a, a lot of the little things that sometimes they don't resonate on the stack sheet, but they have monumental impacts on the overall uh, effort of the team. And he is a Tom Thibodeau guy. Everybody that I speak to, and if you, if you look at Tom Thibodeau's past press conferences, his comments on Josh Hart when he was a, an opponent, this is your prototypical uh, Tom Thibodeau guy. When Josh Hart got here, his first game, he played over 26 minutes, closed the game for the Knicks. And so he's going to be a major factor for that Knicks bench going forward. Obviously, Tibbs still has his impact on the defensive side of the ball for New York, a top 10 scoring defense around the association as well. CP, you mentioned the playoff positioning that New York is having here throughout this stretch run, their final 20 games of this NBA regular season, maybe even trying to catch Cleveland for that fourth spot in the Eastern Conference. But from the odds perspective, the Knicks still have a 65 to 1 price to win the Eastern conference title so cp in your estimation how far away are the knicks from the top of the eastern conference teams like the celtics and the bucks well i i don't think that they're necessarily at the level of the celtics and the bucks they have beaten the celtics this year they have another matchup with them tonight and then one on the road in boston they haven't beaten the bucks yet they've beaten philly twice uh one when philly was undermanned and one when they were fully stacked and I think that Philly team, the Knicks, have a, a nice matchup with them. So I would put them right at four. I think this Knicks team is right up there with the Cleveland Cavaliers right now for about the fourth best team in the East. And as I said before, if they could make it to four, get home, home court in the first round, or even five, maybe against that Cavaliers team, I like their chances to make an upset. Even just being in the Eastern Conference playoffs, not having to deal with a play-in tournament, that 65-1 to 1 number is going to become incredibly shorter than that. You mentioned the matchup against the Celtics tonight inside MSG. New York booked as a two-point home underdog. CP, what's the key matchup in your mind for the Knicks to defend home floor against the Celtics tonight? How do they guard Jason Tatum, and how do they guard the three-point line? This is a Celtics team that is a prolific three-point scoring offense. What type of attention do they send to Jason Tatum, and how they close out on the three-point line against the Celtics shooters? Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon is going to be key. No Jalen Brown in this game. I think if the Knicks come with their A game, led by Julius Randle in the first quarter, great score, uh, Jalen Brunson as well. I like the Knicks' chances to win and uh, you know send a message to the Celtics team, man. You see that star comparison between Tatum and Randall for tonight. CP the franchise, the creator of Knicks Fans TV, and of course you can hear him on Sirius XM Channel 86, NBA Radio right here as well. CP, thank you so much. Enjoy the game tonight, and we appreciate the breakdown on this Monday morning. Ben, thank you. Anytime. We appreciate it sincerely. Now, the prop... 